Yeah. Okay, I'm, great. Okay. I'm happy that everyone's here now, though. Then uh, share. And then it was Nika. Should we do introductions first? Uh, well, we could do it at the beginning of the slide. That's yeah. true. All right. All right. Slido. Yep. Okay. Ooh. I'm hoping you guys can see that. Um, we'd like to go for it on that side. Yeah. Or, thank you. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool, yeah. Hey, squad. Can you get the microphone? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Start it off, Madam so. President. Um, I just want to say welcome to the Science Beyond Hand Sanitizer. Um, so we're RCS, we're the school's chemistry club. Um, my name's Andrea. Um, I'm Abby. I'm Molly. Bella. I'm human. Julia. Okay, next, next slide. Yo. Important question. Who has ever heard of COVID-19? <laughs> Over the past few years, your hands and hard surfaces have become wait, oh my God. washing your hands and cleaning hard surfaces has become important in our daily lives to help the risk Click the top thing. of spreading COVID-19 and other diseases. But how does soap and other disinfectants remove bacteria and viruses from our hands and surfaces? Today we'll go over how soap and water work, hand sanitizer and other disinfectants, and ultraviolet light fight against bacteria, viruses, and COVID-19. And then we'll get to make our own hand sanitizer. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah. So germs. Germs are these tiny living things that have the ability to make us sick. Thank you for the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so major types of germs are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. COVID-19 is a virus. However, we have ways to protect ourselves and others against germs. So we can wash our hands, make sure we cover our nose and mouth when we sneeze or cough, and make sure we keep our immune system healthy by eating healthy and getting enough sleep. It's all so many. Okay, so there are four ways to destroy the coronavirus. So on the left, we have the anatomy of the virus, and we basically can immobilize it by destroying the outer membrane. And there are four things we can use. So one is soap and water. Uh, which is safe to use on your hand and on hard surfaces. We can also use alcohol hand sanitizers, and you can also use them on your hand or surfaces, but they should be at least 60% alcohol for your hands, or at least 70% for surfaces. And there's also bleach solutions and hydrogen peroxide, which you could also use, but avoid using those on your hands and just use them for hard surfaces. Okay, so first, how does soap work? We're told like many times that we should wash our hands frequently. Um, so at the top there, uh, we have a soap molecule. Um, so essentially, a soap molecule has different parts to it that are attracted to different things. Um, and when we mix this with water and a virus, um, the soap has the ability to break apart this virus and it's gonna pull apart the outer membrane and this is gonna essentially destroy the virus. So today, um, we are making a hand sanitizer. Um, most hand sanitizers are made up of four things. Um, the first is an alcohol, either ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. We will be using the isopropyl alcohol. Um, the second is glycerol. Um, it'll help thicken your hand sanitizer and it'll also help moisturize the skin because we are using hard chemicals. Um, number three is hydrogen peroxide. Um, it'll help prevent any bacterial contamination from bottles and surfaces. And the last is water. So um, how do these hand sanitizers um, protect against infections? So mainly it's gonna be our alcohol. Our um, alcohol, um, we want at least 60% um, to make up the total hand sanitizer that we use. And it'll help break down the membranes of these viruses and bacteria. Um, Breaking down these membranes, it can target proteins and it'll inhibit um, reproduction and will ultimately kill the virus. Okay, so as I said before, bleach is another way to um, protect your, like to fight against bacteria and viruses. Uh, so bleach is uh, commonly used to clean surfaces. Um, so this, like, surfaces in your house, you might use products like this. Um, we'll have hydrogen peroxide or sodium hypochlorite, which is another work of bleach. It's chemical name. Um, 
But when these molecules come in contact with bacteria or virus cells, they'll break apart the proteins found in the cell membrane, and this is going to disrupt the structure. Um, and then an interesting fact about bleach is that it was first recorded, the first recorded use of chlorine bleach as a medical disinfectant was in 1847, and an Austrian hospital stopped the spread of a severe, severe infection throughout the maternity ward. Besides bleach, ultraviolet light can also be used to destroy viruses and bacteria and work against fighting infections. All right, some places you see UV light is in the sun. UVA and UVB rays are come from the sun and are transmitted through the atmosphere, unlike UVC and some UVB, which are absorbed by the ozone layer. This means that the most, most of the ultraviolet rays, way, rays that we come in contact with are UVA and UVB. Thank you. So UV sea lights are strong enough to destroy pathogens, and pathogens are just anything that can make it sick, and it penetrates the membrane of the virus and directly to the genetic material, and it basically destroys, well, not destroys, but it renders the genetic material unusable, and it stops the virus from reproducing, and yeah, it stops it from spreading. Okay, so we are making hand sanitizer. Um, so um, because of COVID, we've seen a lot of shortages in grocery stores, any sort of stores, you'll find that a lot of disinfectants and hand sanitizers are out of stock. Um, so a lot of people have started making their own hand sanitizer. Um, the World Health Organization, or WHO, has provided guidelines to help make these hand sanitizers, and um, we will be making one of our own today. Um, so, the, what we will be using today will be isopropyl alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, water, and glycerol. Um, do we want to, like, stop sharing and then switch to the screen? I can't remember what you Okay, said. so we're going to start the making the hand sanitizer now. Does anyone have questions we before sure. we go ahead? Good? Yeah. Does everyone have your... Do you have your materials ready? Maybe you're too far from the... Are we ready? <laughs> Your finger goes... I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not saying the bad thing. I'm just saying, well... <laughs> I'm ready to try it. Can you just start setting up? Like, turning yeah. yeah. Okay. So, give us like a yes when you're ready. It's like in the chat. I see if you get the back. Oh my God, it's really foggy. <laughs> oh, no. So, we will be using gloves and some sort of uh, safety uh, glasses um, just for overall safety. No materials but ready. Okay. Fantastic. Um, We'll, we will be sending out any more information if you ever want to do this afterwards. Mm, I have to push it down. Yay. Okay, so to start. You're going to take our beaker, and we're going to be using our um, we'll be using isopropyl alcohol. Um, this is going to take up the majority of our hand sanitizer. We are going to need six tablespoons. If you're doing this at home as well, you can use any container. Um, you don't need like beakers or like glassers or glassware. Okay. And I'll also be adding two teaspoons. We'll share the PDF of this afterwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can give them. Yeah, so you guys will have the instructions later. Okay. 
Absolutely. Next up, we have glycerol to moisturize our hands because of the alcohol. Okay. And we're going to add one quarter of a tablespoon of glycerol. Did I clean pour? <laughs> Clean form. <laughs> Up next, we're going to add some, you know, fancy hydrogen peroxide to our solution, which also works like the alcohol to fight bacteria and all that jazz. So we'll be adding roughly a third of a tablespoon, which is about a teaspoon. Awesome. And then last, we just add about three teaspoons of water. Um, we're using DI water, but it doesn't matter. We're also using a spray bottle because it's more accurate. <laughs> yes. And then afterwards, you just thoroughly mix the uh, mixtures. And yeah, it should be good. So now you have your hand sanitizer. Yay! Yes. Let's go. Um, just one thing: if you're making this at home, um, it is a little more like liquid than like commercial hand sanitizers, so don't be freaked out if you're like, this is really thin. Um, but nonetheless, it still it works if you know you ever want to make your own. You can, um, yeah. You can also add any uh colored dyes if you want. Yeah, you can add like essential oils if you want it to smell nice, or you can add. Put it in a fancy spray bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just when you're, this is like less of a detail, but when it's in like an open container like this, don't put it directly under yourself. There's a lot of fumes going on. So yeah. Yeah, waff. <laughs> awesome. Marie, were you making it at home with us? Or Marie and Andy? I know Chrissy said you didn't have material, the material. Should we switch back to the PowerPoint? Just for the video? Yeah. Three cool experiments. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Okay, so that was really the whole like hand sanitizer part. Um, Where's my? We should be able to like. I can see. Yeah. Yeah. Can see probably. Like a CVS or a Walgreens. Yeah. If you don't have it with you, you should like in your home. Um, you should be able to find it like, like yeah, like CVS, Walgreens. And we're gonna begin. And we'll we'll send out like the document with all the amounts and everything if you wanna like go and make it like at a later date. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. All right, now we're gonna show you some demos. First off, we have the potato battery. So we can create a circuit using a potato to power a light bulb, which is pretty sick. So in the potato battery, basically we have two electrodes. One's gonna be the nail, the other one's gonna be the penny. And the electrolyte is going to be the potato because it has positive and negative charged particles, allowing for it to conduct electric an electric current. All right, so. Oh, you have to make sure the audio is on. Uh, Go click at the top. Uh, wait, wait. What's going on? Someone who can do it. Need an ad right now. Under share. I'm going to stop sharing this for a minute. Um, just to make sure that you guys can hopefully hear it. Hmm. 
Yeah, and we can also ask them if they can hear. Yeah, my bad. Glycerol. So today we're going to see if we can power these little Christmas lights just by yeah. using can you guys regular potatoes. Hear it? So you're going to need yeah. some potatoes, LED lights, wire strippers. I'm using 14 gauge wire. Some galvanized nails. I have leg bolts. A multimeter just to see how many bolts each potato produces. Some sort of a knife. And then I just have regular 16 gauge wire so I can tie and these two walk, walk. LEDs together. So for the first thing, what you're going to want to do, cut a strip off about 8 10 inches. Strip it down to bare copper. Find something that's round, place it on there like so, and then wrap it around a few times. Next, let's take a regular potato. If you got a potato this size, go ahead and cut it right in half. And you can make two batteries, double the bolts. I don't have any galvanized nails, so I gotta use leg bolt, leg screws. Take the leg screw on the other side. You're going to want to get your copper in there. So just put a little slice in here. Take another wire. Wrap it around the galvanized nail or leg bolt or whatever you've got. Take your multimeter, set it to 20. Put the red positive in the copper wire, and your negative, or your common, on the galvanized nail. So let's hook a couple more of these up in series and see what we can get for voltage. 1.88 doubled it so now I hooked up 13 cells and we'll see what the voltage reads it's about seven so we'll see now if it's enough voltage to power a little LED light Christmas bulb very faint but it does come on So they do produce electricity, but okay. okay. So as you can see, uh, it took a lot of potatoes to power that little tiny light bulb. Um, but it's still pretty cool. Um, it might be a challenge. Um, definitely make sure you have current supervision, though. You know, I don't want anyone like hurting themselves or anything like that. So. Out. Okay, so I don't know if you guys heard that. I don't know when that, if we went back off, but um, I'm just going to repeat it just in case. Um, so from the video, you can see it took a lot of potatoes to just power that little tiny light bulb. Um, so, it, yeah, we tried to do it, and it didn't work. But um, it might be a challenge to you at home. Just make sure you, you know, have parent supervision. Um, I don't want anyone, like, hurting themselves or anything, especially when you're, you know, so. But it it's pretty cool, though, that you can do that but this is something you can actually do at home without much material yeah but please don't do this one inside um please i don't want any parents mad at me but um we can learn about gas laws so this is another fun demo you can do not in your house but outside and with a parent's permission um but we can learn about gas laws from a plastic water bottle which is pretty cool because you know you can, they're you know common everyday objects 
Um, so <laughs> there exists a relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas in two different states. Um, so the combined gas law, which the equation is shown on the bottom, um, relates to pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas in uh, two different states. Um, so like if you change the pressure in the volume, um, you know, there can be like a temperature change. You can always keep things constant, but overall, um, this relates to three different variables. Um, so if we decrease the volume of our bottle by twisting the bottom of it, um, it's going to increase the pressure inside of the bottle. Um, so decreasing the volume and increasing the pressure, when we then um, just slightly unscrew the cap, um, the cap's going to fly off because the pressure is all going to be released. Um, so yeah. And we have like a short little video. A lot of folks ask me why their dishwasher doesn't get everything clean. I tell them, it may be your detergent. That's why more dishwasher brands recommend Cascade Platinum. With the soaking, scrubbing, and rinsing built right in. For sparkling clean dishes the first time. Cascade Platinum. Hey, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show you something really simple, really cool. It's really simple to do. Just take a water bottle, open the cap just a little bit so that some air can come out. So we're gonna leave it open a little. Then just twist it from the middle of the bottle and you'll feel the pressure building up inside it. But it's really tight, it's very hard to squeeze. See right, like right that, right there? Twist it, twist it, and then you're gonna flip down on the cap like that. Hit, hit the camera. I don't even know where that went. But look, you saw that smoke ring that just came out? I should film this in slow motion. <laughs> that just knocked the other bottle down. Let's see that again. Okay, we're filming in slow motion again, 240 FPS. And let's see if I can actually get one to hit or get close to the camera lens. Again, open it a drop, open the cap a drop, twist it as much as you can to get that air pressure building inside it, and then... Flick it off, that went so far. It just shot up all the way across the living room um, onto the window, I'm in my living room. Okay. Oh yeah, so please don't do that without a parent's permission, please. We don't wanna knock someone's eye out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, so then lastly, we really just had a couple like fun videos that you can't necessarily like, how'd it go? <laughs> how did it go? Yeah, did it work? Yeah. What was your distance? <laughs> did you wear a fedora? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. True chemist. True chemist. Um, so we just had a couple of videos that I, we, well, we think are pretty cool. Um, you can't really do them at home because they like at your house because it requires some like heavy chemicals. Um, but they're pretty cool. Um, things you can do with chemistry. So. And this is right outside of our chemistry this is, department. Yeah, this is outside. Yeah. This is at RPI. Yes. Yeah. So the first one is just gun cotton. <laughs> I love it. So we gotta see this. We gotta replay it again. We gotta replay it. Again. <laughs> oh. oh. So essentially, with gun cotton, what you do is you take cotton balls, and when you soak it in some pretty strong acids, um, you change the like like the like cotton at the molecular level, which makes the explosion a lot um like fast, like it combusts a lot faster. Um. So in this video, there's 103 cotton balls that are being lit. Um, so, yeah, that was the record by the group that does the gun chem demos at the school. So. We should try something. <laughs> yeah, and don't do what he did. He needs to wear goggles. <laughs> but don't, don't try this at home, please. 
Um, so the second one is just Lu- it's uh, named Luminal. So essentially, this is Luminal has um, applications in crime scene investigations, actually. Um, so it's used at crime scenes. You can like put it down, and um, it will protect any traces of blood. Um, so it will fluoresce. So here there's um, like a hydrogen peroxide solution and a luminal solution, and when they mix, they're going to fluoresce, and you're going to see it going down the tube. Um, just pretty cool. No. <laughs> it's so nice. Did anybody do like the blue bottle experiment? Like she the bottle like it's blue and it slowly goes back to clear? No? Oh, yeah. I, like oh I, I did that. I, I, I did that. That's kind of sick. I'm like, yeah. 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 Usually, usually when it's been during class, they like turn off all the lights, and it's it's pretty. Oh cool. no, we did. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really cool. cool. It's like an unnatural blue right there. It really doesn't look real, but it's yeah. And then there's like one last video um, that we have, which is hot ice. So essentially, um, you do this by you prepare like a super super saturated solution of sodium acetate. So super saturated essentially just means that um, you're dissolving more sodium acetate um, in water than you like can at that like temperature. And so you do this by heating the solution and then cooling it. Um, and when you like pour it out, so there was like a crystal, and you pour it out, you can like pour it out like what you can see in the video. If it's like all just pouring on top of each other, and it's pretty cool. You can make different like structures. So. I mean, what else are you supposed to do at RPK? <laughs> Why don't you come studying chem? You get to do something. Yeah, advertisement for the chem department. <laughs> so that was all that we really had for our presentation. Um, we do have like a couple more minutes. If any of you guys have any questions or if there's anything, um, I can put the. You want to see a video again? Yeah. 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 If you have any requests for another video, um, I can put the like PDF for you guys if you want to try making hand sanitizer another time. Um, so I will do that now. But if you guys have anything, any questions, anything really, let us know. Thank you. Oh, oh no, no thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. It was a good time. Well, a good Getting time. our science on. A lot of things. We'll be so nice. I'm going to give you guys the link actually for a. Um, for a Google, like a Google Doc with the instructions. Um, I think because I don't know how to actually put a PDF in. Yeah. Um, I think all the copy paste works. Yeah. <laughs> if you're hearing that, essentially my laptop, um, a couple keys are working. Yes, so. Andrew's laptop is not doing very well, but it's okay. <laughs> or we're, we're working through it. Yeah. All right. So the link does work. I just tried it. Um, there should be that link for you if you guys want to try and do that um, like later or um, and then there's also some like nice like like websites as far as the um, other things like the other demos you're saying you could do at home so awesome yeah thank you so much for coming though I'm really glad that we had people Yay. Yay. chemistry the gold club, the gold club. Exactly. Maybe should we be not on the table? Oh, so instead of like a instead of coming, it's a German thing. That's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, you forgot it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks God. Oh. Yes. Oh yeah.